A young girl is picking up groceries in a shopping basket while talking on the phone with her friend. Suddenly, a reanimated corpse appears in front of her. The girl defends herself but the lights go out and another zombie attacks her. From this terrifying dream, Kieran hears the voice of a doctor who brings him good news. His brain is recovering and responding to medication. Despite suffering from partial death syndrome, after completing his treatment, Kieran has regained his sanity and can now return to his hometown of Rowigen as part of a home care program along with others like him. He will be reunited with his parents and is given colored lenses for his eyes and a special camouflaging gel for his skin pigment so that he can look natural. Meanwhile, Kieran's parents inform their daughter Jemima about her brother's return, but she reacts very explosively and runs away from home. The couple goes to find their son, who at this moment is confessing to other rising about his wrongdoings during his partial death state. Kieran still struggles with the fact that he took lives. However, he smiles when he remembers his younger sister, whom he can't wait to see again. At the same time, Jemima arrives at the bar, where members of the local volunteer people's militia who actively participated in the eradication of zombies during the rising of the dead a gathering. The people are very hostile and intend to continue fighting the reanimated corpses despite the government's assurances of their safety if they constantly take this specially developed medicine. At night, Kieran has another dream where he attacks a girl in a store. But in the morning he gets himself together and goes to meet his parents. His mother and father are shocked by his appearance but cry with happiness at seeing their son alive. The chaperone expresses his doubts as Rowerton suffered the most during the Rising of the Dead event. But the parents convince him that the townspeople are reacting calmly to the risen which is not true. And just at that time, the town vicar gives a speech about intolerance towards the sick, and the residents boo the politician trying to call for tolerance among the townspeople. On the way, the father tries to cheer up his son and tells him about the television and movie discs he has acquired for him. But at the entrance, they see a crowd of the townspeople and order their son to hide in the back seat. Kieran hides, not understanding what danger is threatening him. The parents hastily drive home, where they bring the boy out, covering him with clothes from the curious eyes of the neighbors. Later, a local nurse comes to the house, who now has to watch over the survivors and give them injections of the drug that allows them to remain conscious. The woman reminds them to use pigment mousse for their skin and contact lenses, without which it is not safe to be seen in public. And for the mother, she leaves a stun gun, as the disease can return, and then Kieran will become dangerous. At that time, the vicar recruits the nurse's son, Philip, asking about his mother's activities and demanding that he learn about all the risen who have returned to the district. And Kieran's parents sit down for a festive dinner to celebrate their son's return. But he no longer needs food, and his mother asks him to pretend to eat his favorite dishes. At that moment, Jemima arrives but refuses to sit at the table when she sees Kieran. Upset, Kieran leaves for his room and pulls out memorabilia letters and photos. Meanwhile, the parents of Kieran's friend, Rick, look at a similar photo of a young man. It would have been his birthday today, but he died in the war in Afghanistan. At the same time, Philip tries to open his mother's laptop to find a list of the risen, but his mother catches him and he gives up his intention. Kieran suffers from memories of his actions when Jemima tries to figure out if he remains the same kind and sensitive guy. His brother tells her things that only they knew. The girl cries from overwhelming emotions. It turns out that Kieran killed himself when he learned about the death of his best friend and love partner Rick, who was forced to join the army after his father Macy found out about their relationship. And Jemima cannot forgive her brother for not thinking about the family. That same evening, the head of the local militia, Bill Macy, Rick's father, learns from the vicar about the appearance of a risen person in the town. He gathers the militia and announces his intention over the radio. Hearing this, Jemima rushes to warn her parents and brother. They hide Kieran and the parents arm themselves with whatever they can. But it turns out that the militants arrived at the house across the street where the elderly owner had returned. Despite her husband's pleas, Macy shoots the partially dead woman. Kieran is shaken by the violence and for the first time Jemima begins to question the righteousness of her commander, who at that moment receives news that his son is partially alive and returning home. Kieran is increasingly introspective while his sister plays games where she destroys zombies. One day, Kieran tries to express his gratitude to her for warning him, but the girl refuses to speak to him, saying that she did it only for their parents. On another day, Kieran learns about an upcoming ceremony to honor those who died in the uprising, which his mother and sister plan to attend. Meanwhile, the nurse tries to prepare Rick's parents for his impending return. But Macy refuses to believe that his son is coming back, not only from Afghanistan, but also from the afterlife. Kieran reads Rick's tender letters again, in which he promises to confront his father, but his own father reminds him to take his medication. At that moment, there is a knock on the door. It is the mandatory daily inspection of houses by the municipality, and Kieran's father locks him in the pantry. 
While there, Kieran remembers how he woke up in a coffin and tried to lift the lid. His father releases him, apologizes for his actions and refers to an urgent work call before leaving. Kieran asks questions but his father rushes off. Immediately after that, Kieran puts on his father's old jacket and leaves home. He tries to slip past everyone unnoticed and heads to the cemetery where the ceremony to honor the dead begins and is led by Macy, the leader of the uprising, who announces the return of his son. Meanwhile, Kieran finds his own grave and remembers the gruesome details of the uprising once again. But then he notices a girl who greets him very positively. He starts to run, the girl catches up with him, and Kieran instinctively puts an iron rod in front of him, which the girl runs into with her whole body. But seeing the scared look on Kieran's face, she starts to laugh cheerfully. He's a weirdo, she's been dead for a long time. Her name is Amy and she's happy to meet someone like herself. The girl shows him her grave and asks for details about his death. At the same time, people are gathering at Macy's house to meet Rick. And there he is, getting out of the car. And against all predictions, his father reaches out his hand to him. Meanwhile, Amy takes Kieran to the city park. She wants to ride the carousel. While Macy takes his son to an improvised shooting range. They shoot at cans. And Rick's father asks for details about his service. While his mother tries to come to terms with her son's new position. Meanwhile, Amy and Kieran enjoy their ride on the carousel. And the girl convinces him that what happened to them is a blessing. Because now they don't have to wait for the inevitable end. And can live to the fullest. Kieran realizes that the girl has become a fan of a blogger, her precious respect for those who have experienced the partial death syndrome, and claims that they are not responsible for what they did in a state of delirium. Meanwhile, Rick's parents tell him about Kieran's suicide. At the same time, people in the park realize that Kieran is arisen. They call him a rotter and attack him. The boy is forced to run. As he makes his way through the woods, Kieran notices a wild zombie hiding in a cave. He walks past the board of photos of missing people and recognizes his sister's friend, who he personally killed. Kieran takes down the poster. He manages to sneak into his house before his family returns, who are discussing whether to tell their son the truth about Rick. Meanwhile, Macy suggests going to a bar, which confuses everyone, as it is a gathering place for zombie fighters. But they respect the commander too much and remain silent. Amy visits Kieran, behaving freely and joking with his parents, considering their condition completely natural. Angry Jemima leaves to go to her friends, but they refuse to accept her because her brother is a rotter. The girl is confused because the son of their leader is a rotter too, but they explain to her that this is a different case. Amy tells Kieran that she died of leukemia, and when she learns about his suicide, she pities him. When Jemima returns, she tells her brother about Rick's return, and he, accompanied by Amy, runs to the bar, where Rick is talking about his service. Kieran and Amy enter the bar, causing astonishment among those present. They are asked to go to a place specifically designated for them. But then Rick and Kieran meet, and Macy's son is outraged by the situation. The patrons have to accept it. Meanwhile, one of the guards notices wild zombies in the forest and rushes to the town. Macy announces the hunt, and Rick and Kieran set off with the others. While the hunters move forward, Rick asks Kieran why he killed himself, and he confesses that he did it after learning about his death. Macy calls them, and the guys hurry to the cave, where they find a whole family of zombies. Upon hearing Macy's call to destroy them all, Kieran stands up for their defense, as they can be cured. Rick prepares to shoot, but Kieran stands in front of the barrel. They are just like the boys themselves. Playing on the desire to make money, Kieran convinces the hunters that they should catch zombies and send them to the hospital, although one of the hunters still gets bitten. Macy is furious with the outcome and cannot forgive his son for his betrayal, demanding that Kieran be destroyed as memories of his crime torment him. Meanwhile, Kieran's sister regrets not pulling the trigger and shooting her own brother, lying to everyone that she ran out of bullets. Kieran announces that he's going to the parents of the girl he killed. Meanwhile, Macy instructs his son on how to destroy his former friend, who is now worse than an animal. Rick calls Kieran's house and leaves a warning on the answering machine, as he is obliged to obey his father. However, Kieran and Jemima do not hear the warning because they are on their way to the parents of their deceased friend. Meanwhile, Macy discovers a boy drawing warning signs on his garage door, indicating that a living person is inside. At the girl's parents' house, Kieran confesses to what he has done. The man and woman take it calmly, believing that their daughter simply caught something from Kieran and is now wandering somewhere in the woods. They are grateful to Kieran for not letting the family they found in the cave be killed, giving them hope that their daughter will be treated the same way. Kieran tries to explain that her case was not the same, 
But Jemima interrupts her brother, saying not to take away the parents' hope. Meanwhile, Macy brings Rick to a sermon where the vicar calls for the destruction of the rotten ones and promises a second uprising that will bring back everyone who has passed on. One of the members of the local militia breaks into Amy's house and intimidates her for walking the streets without makeup. Jemima thanks her brother for his bravery when they see Amy at the station. The girl tells Karen that she's going to the community for the conditionally alive because she's tired of being alone. She doesn't have a family like he does. They say goodbye and the girl leaves. Meanwhile, the nurse holds a meeting for the loved ones of the Risen, where the mothers of Rick and Kieran confess similar feelings, while Macy teaches Rick how to guarantee the destruction of the rotters. After that, Rick goes to his room and removes the makeup from his face. At this time, his mother admits that although he may not look the same as before, the boy hasn't changed inside. He remains the same kind and good son. And Rick goes to his father and admits that he doesn't intend to destroy Kieran, because if he's evil, then Rick is evil too. His father embraces him, promising that everything will turn out well. Meanwhile, the husband of a woman who was killed by Macy discovers a locked-up hunter who has been bitten by a zombie. The man is being kept in quarantine and not allowed to eat. The man promises to bring him food and leaves. Macy packs up his son's things and goes outside to cover up the graffiti announcing the presence of a human suffering from the partial death syndrome in the house. While Jemima also packs up her weapons and anything reminding her of her service in the militia. Macy throws his son's bag of belongings and the girl takes a box to the shed. Jemima listens to Rick's message on the answering machine and rushes off to find her brother. Rick's mother returns home, and her husband tells her that he hasn't seen their son in five years. Meanwhile, Kieran approaches his house and finds his friend's body with Macy's knife in his neck. He says goodbye to Rick and then takes out the knife and heads to Macy's house. The neighbor sees all of this. Kieran enters the house and accuses Macy of killing his own son. But Macy is sure that it was not the real Rick and that the real one will come back next time. Rick's mother screams in horror and while Kieran tries to calm her down, Macy goes to the yard where the neighbor is waiting for him with a gun. There is a gunshot and Macy falls. Kieran goes to the cave where his mother finds him. She tells him about her unhappy love story and how her future husband helped her get through it. She talks about how they really felt when she left and how his father couldn't talk to him because he never gave him the chance. Kieran goes home and asks his father for forgiveness because he didn't think about other people's feelings. The man tells him how he found him at the cave and carried him on the shoulders. The man cries and Kieran hugs him. And that's how the first season ends.